Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be taking a look at the Tableau Metadata API and how you can start uh, slinging your own GraphQL queries against this to uh, get really useful information about your Tableau ecosystem that would otherwise be really tedious to get a hold of and probably unrealistic to, to ever get answers to some of these questions if you didn't have the Metadata API. Uh, so, for starters here, in order to use the Metadata API, we can take a look at the documentation from Tableau, and we can see that there are some prereqs that you're going to need to meet. You are going to need to be on a uh, version of Tableau server that's 2019.3 or later, or if you're on Tableau Online, you're good. It's already um, kept up to date to the latest versions. And then you're going to want to uh, check with your Tableau server administrator if the REST API is enabled and if the metadata API is enabled. If either of these are disabled, then uh, you're not going to be able to interact with this. Um, so if you follow along with the video and everything's working for you, then you actually don't need to check with your server admin. But if you're trying to follow along and it's not working for you, that's the first thing I would check check that both of these items here are enabled. So, uh, as far as actually tapping into the Metadata API, you know, like, what is this anyways? So, it's called the Metadata API. It's, it's not really giving you any, any data that's, uh, that's in your workbooks or, uh, you know, like, sales numbers or anything like that. It's all metadata about your Tableau environment. So, if you're interested in things such as um, hey, what kinds of data connections do we have on our server? Uh, how many, uh, like, who are the owners of different uh, data sources or workbooks? Or um, how many workbooks do we have per project? Um, maybe even which database tables do you connect to? It's not just the databases themselves, but which tables are we hitting? Which tables are most used? Um, and, and those kinds of things are, are really, really basic tip of the iceberg type use cases. Um, maybe in more advanced use cases, you, you might want to build a, an impact analysis um, dashboard that you publish to Tableau Server that uh, describes for you, um, you know, if there's a problem with a certain database asset, how many of your workbooks will be impacted? Or if you're doing a migration from uh, Redshift to Snowflake, how many workbooks are you going to have to rejigger to, uh, to use that new database? And what level of effort are you looking at? These are prime use cases for the metadata API. That's going to be a total nightmare to try to figure out by hand. And it's a, it could be really a total breeze to figure that out with the metadata API. So a lot of that stuff we'll dive into in future tutorials. For today, let's just take a step back from all of that and let's take a look at what you can see, like what's exposed to you in your site uh, by default um, that's related to the metadata API. So if you go down here to this external assets tab, that's what I've clicked on here, we can see that there is a way for you to see some of this metadata. We can see some of these various connection types uh, for our databases and files. We can also see some of the tables that we're connecting to, and in my case, this is a dev site. I'm not actually connecting to any databases, so these tables are all kind of tables in, in terms of their sheets in a CSV file or their tables from a, from a hyper file. And uh, if you were connected to databases, you'd see some other kinds of uh, database tables here as well. So this is nice to have, but we don't have much flexibility over this. And um, let's just set up a use case where we would like to know um, for our entire site, what are some of our oldest extracts we have? Do we have any really stale content? Um, and if we do, who's the owner of this? Maybe we can shoot them an email and say, hey, can you check on some of this? We're really trying to keep our, uh, our Tableau ecosystem clean. And if something hasn't been refreshed in a year, maybe it's time to start thinking about uh, removing it from the server. Um, so that's our use case. And we could start to answer that by clicking on this guy right up here. Uh, this would take us to the, uh, the Metadata API um, GraphQL interface. This is much like a, um, a blank worksheet if you were querying against a SQL database or something like that. So uh, we will be using the GraphQL interface here to query our metadata API. 
or, or to query our metadata. Um, and if you didn't want to navigate to this section of your server every time you want to go uh, to that interface, you could simply log into your site and then go to metadata slash graph and then it's IQL. And that's going to take you to the same place. Um, now here I have a little uh, really basic starter um, for, for querying something. Uh, I tend to be pretty workbook focused. Workbooks are kind of the bread and butter of a Tableau server environment. So maybe for all of our workbooks, we would like to know what is the name of the workbook and we want some details about the owner and specifically here we just care about the email. If we ran a GraphQL query like this, this is the kind of output we would get. Now this output is in JSON format uh, and so in a, in a little bit we're going to just copy some JSON output and we're going to paste that into a file and save it uh, locally on my computer so that we can then crack open a Tableau desktop and start to play around with this data in an interactive way. Um, you might even use that approach to build an interactive dashboard that uses data from the meta metadata API to build you things like what I, what I mentioned earlier, an impact analysis dashboard. So, uh, so you don't have to answer all your questions in, in one thing. You could make an interactive dashboard that points to data that's whose source is the metadata API and then people could interactively figure out uh, what is the impact of us um, changing a certain database table or something like that. All right, so uh, this gives us uh, some building blocks. Now, what is this guy up here? Um, this little docs button is something that's going to be really useful to you as you're getting familiar with the metadata API and writing queries. So over here, I, I uh, was querying the workbooks, and how did I know that there was a name and an owner attribute? And then with an owner, how did I know that I could get the email address? Uh, well, for starters, you could just be typing, and you would get some uh, autocomplete here. That's nice. But maybe you don't even know what, to, what first letter to type. You didn't know that name was an option. So you can always start typing in something that you're interested in into this uh, searchable documentation. And we would find that workbook is, is an entity that we can query. And then within the workbooks, you have name, um, you have the uh, an ID value. And just so you know, if you're familiar with the REST API uh, and like uh, the concept of a workbook ID, the LUID is actually what you would want to reference. That's what maps to the IDs as they exist in the REST API. So um, you kind of want to ignore this and use the LUID. So let's wrap up that side tangent and let's, uh, let's go back to explaining um, how did I know that there was an owner? Well, that's just documented here as an attribute of a workbook. And if I click on owner, uh, we can see that that tied into this, this concept of a Tableau user and a Tableau user has an email address. So that's why um, I was able to, to go down this rabbit hole of saying, all right, we're looking at workbooks. Then we're also concerned with the owner of the workbook, and that owner has an email. So we could go, we could talk about this for hours probably, but I want to just hop into a more advanced query over here that I've already written, just to give you an example of, uh, of how we could go about solving that use case I mentioned earlier. Uh, now in this case, we've introduced a, a few new things to this query. We still have the name of the workbook. Um, now we're bringing in that, uh, that ID. Uh, we're also seeing which project the workbook belongs to, but then you have these nested objects here like upstream data sources and embedded data sources. So in the, in the metadata API, you have these concepts of things that are upstream from you and things that are downstream. So like a, a data source that's published on Tableau server that a workbook connects to, that would be an upstream data source because that data source already exists on the server and our workbook is tapping into it. Now an embedded data source is going to be something that's only existing locally with that workbook. So maybe you have an Excel file that you connect to and you, you create an extract that's embedded and only exists inside that workbook. That would be an embedded data source. Uh, now there's a lot more here. I don't want to explain too much, but your data sources could have extracts or they could not have extracts. So has extracts is going to tell us uh, um, whether it's true or false. Now, if it's true, that means that this 
particular data connection is an extract. Uh, if it's false, it means it's not. And the extract last refresh time is going to give us information about um, if this is an extract. So let's see if we find one of these. Yeah, right here, uh, this particular data source uh, that's embedded in this workbook, it's called Sales Navigator Connection, and it is true that it has extracts. And that extract was last refreshed uh, 2019, January of 2019. So at the time of making this video, we're in uh, January 2nd, 2021. So this is pretty old. This is one where maybe we want to uh, get in touch with whoever this owner is. So let's uh, let's go ahead and, s and add some owner information here. And the owner, we want the email again. So if we click Run again, um, any, any of these workbooks... Um, that are connecting to something old like now we know for that that thing we could contact someone and ask that person hey is this old thing something that really needs to be on the server still so in the interest of time here um, let's just say that you're happy with the GraphQL query that you've produced now how do you get this into a Tableau workbook so this output over here is in JSON format and we can select all of it copy that text, go into a text editor, and save all of this uh, text as a JSON file. So I'm going to save this as metadata API tutorial 3.json, and I'm going to hop into Tableau Desktop, and I'm going to connect to that JSON file. So when we click to connect to this, we're going to get the uh, option to cherry pick what we want from that JSON file. So Tableau is smart enough that it's detecting all these different schema levels. And those schema levels are basically hierarchies that exist inside that those nested JSON objects. So each workbook is going to have an embedded data source um, hierarchy built into it. It's going to have um, upstream data sources, embedded data sources, owners. So there's a lot going on. And let's just extract everything, which then Tableau flattens for us into one kind of like, a, this is almost like a CSV file now of just um, all those hierarchies have been unpacked. And if we hop into our uh, Tableau worksheet, we can now tap into each of those hierarchies. So let's say we want to just know who are all the different owners on our site. So I have two different owners here. Um, maybe we want to know for our embedded data sources, what are the names of these things? Um, okay, and now what is the, uh, which of these have extracts? So we can see that uh, we have a mixed bag, some have extracts, some do not. So for these that do have extracts, when were the last time they were refreshed? And so now we can start to see that uh, once you pull this metadata API into a Tableau workbook, you get the benefit of having this, uh, these interactive worksheets. You're probably already familiar with uh, Tableau Desktop, and so your data's in here, and you can start to explore things like, um, all right, this, uh, this extract's really old. Well, who should I get in touch with? All right, so now we can see uh, if I want to ask some questions about this really, really old extract here, about that scorecard, I'm going to need to email this guy. Now you can see I'm always the culprit here. <laughs> this is my dev site, but, uh, but hopefully you get the point there. And uh, we'll be diving into this a little bit deeper in some future videos. Um, we might even go through the process of how you could build an impact analysis um, dashboard and uh, at least we'll explore in some more detail some of the some of what you can get out of the metadata API, and we'll definitely be doing some videos on how you can automate the process of generating this data. Because right now we've been going out to the site and we've been manually plugging this in. And if we wanted to refresh this data, we would need to uh, come out here and run this each time, copy and paste that data into a file, and then uh, refresh our Tableau workbook. But uh, a lot of that process we could automate if we just knew how to issue metadata queries, uh, metadata API queries, through the REST API. So we'll explore that in a future video. We will use the Tableau server REST API to actually send a query like this to the metadata API so we could automate the process of fetching this data 
um, via Python scripts. So that does it for this tutorial. I hope this uh, gets the wheel spinning in your brain about how you can use the metadata API to, uh, to kind of keep your Tableau server environment um, polished and uh, running as efficiently as possible. So stay tuned for future videos and hope to see you there.